Hello, 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 hello. Wherever you happen to be on this stupendous planet, we curve. Wherever you happen to be, I hope you are having a tantalizing day, even or night where you're located. Welcome aboard. Regardless of the three application you're using, if you're here with us today, that means you care about Linda and all this unique intricacies. So welcome aboard. Our topic for the day is something that most of us already know anyway. We just don't we probably don't use it a lot, but we know about it. It's about having an object follow a path. But I'm gonna make it different, people. Cause I discovered I heard of some people talking to that still watch videos about this stuff. I heard a guy talking about this, but he didn't do it. He just was talking. When you have an object follow the path, as you see my little illustration here, you shouldn't have the object follow the path. You should use an empty. Up here, my outline. You see, I have empty. I empty zero zero one. I click on it. You know, I have the light. A nerve curve, Susanna, and I have a camera, but I don't know what a camera uh, thing went at, but the camera's there. You see it right here. My, my topic is today. Don't trouble yourself by having the object follow path. No, use it empty. And I'm going to show you why it's good to use the empty. Right here, here's my object. I went over here for the new people who may be new to this. To get my to get this uh into the following path, I clicked on uh constraints. You go to add a constraint, then you go to follow path. Then I went to target that shows my nerves curve right here. That's my nerves curve. And I discovered too, an object with a follow path is only gonna follow a curve. I, I did that too. And they, they gotta be a native curve. It will not follow a path if you decided to go to object, you go to convert, you choose curve. It's still, because I did it, it still won't follow the curve. It has to be a native, naturally occurring curve. If I'm wrong, somebody in the comment section can correct me, but I, I did it. I had a, a regular mesh circle. I can convert it to a curve, and it didn't follow it. So... Now, I went over here to my, I click on my empty, I went to add constraints, and I chose follow path. And right here, my target is, again, my nerve curve. And while I use um the follow path, I always have it on fixed position, and I always use follow curve, because then I can use this offset factor. When you click those two, as you'll see, I can use that offset factor with no hassle. I haven't explained those curve radius yet, and I may do that someday. So we got that set. Now, my camera is targeted to Susanna. For the new people, I'm only doing this for the new people. To target Susanna, I want to add constraint, and I want to uh, target to. And I took care of that. Let's see how this works now. I have to click back on my, uh, my empty. I'm just gonna before I activate my camera, I'm just gonna click on offset factor to see if it's working from this point of view. Uh, yes, it was working. So now let's click on my camera and let's see. You see, it's following it because it's on that curve. Now, this why this why I said use an empty. Remember, you want the, I can take the empty off the curve. I can do this. Well, uh, let me take my empty. I can take the empty off the curve like that. But the objective, but the thing is called follow path. That's what it's called. It still may follow the path. See, it's still following from a different position. But you never want that. Using, we want the object directly on the path. So, that's why I use an empty and I attach my iron to the empty. So now, since my camera is connected to the empty, we already saw it was moving. 
It was patented, and for the new people to do the patent, you have to hit Control P and you just choose object or whatever one you want to do. It don't matter. Okay, watch. So I'm gonna hit my camera. I'm gonna move it. I could do that with the object too, but you remember, usually it's called follow path, and you want your object on a path. I want my empty on a path. Now, since it's there, I can still move it without no hassles. And you all know in the 3D applications, when you have an object on the path and you decide to move that object, sometimes it goes awry. But, but, but since the object is stuck on the path and I have my camera planted to the object, it can never go wrong. Never. Let me move my camera again. I'm going to move it directly above Susanna if I can. Directly above it. I'm looking at my camera. Look at my camera. So it's directly above it. Oh, well, I'm going to go back. I'm going to click on that. Empty. Oh, I can click on that empty from right here. Click on my empty. So I'm going to set my offset right here. And we see, look, the camera is directly above uh, above Susanna. And my, per and my uh, empty is still stuck on the path as it was designed to be. Yes, I can move my empty around. I can move my object around, but you know when you're seeing it's more and more complicated, you want the object to be stuck to the path. So, my high cycle file in this short video, good people, don't worry about placing your spaceship on the path. Don't put your spaceship on the path. Oh, and I know why too. That's why. I'm going to give you an example why it's good to have your objects on the path. See, because you only can have one object on the path. But what if I had multiple cameras? I'm going to add another camera. I'm going to add a camera here. Then I'm going to click here. I'm just going to grab the camera. I'm just going to put it anywhere. I'm just going to put it anywhere. I don't, I don't, I'm just showing you a principle of what the benefits of parenting to the, um, to that empty. Because remember, you only can uh, have one object for the most part on a path. And if there's multiple objects on the path, you have to move them around for the most part. I think I can put multiple objects on that path, but they may all be right on top of each other. And I will have to go to the hassle of moving them. So it just lets the parent them. I'm going to add a little cube right here. Mesh the cube. I'm just, I'm just going to grab this. And we're going to see the benefits of the parenting. I'm going to click on my cube. Click on my empty. Hit control P. Parenting. I'm going to click on my second camera. Hit shift key. Click on that. Control P. Parenting. Now, I just want to click right on that empty. And we're going to see the magic of why it's good to parent. See, look at that. That's the benefit of parenting. And, like I said earlier, I could put multiple objects on this uh on this curve, but then I would have to go to the uh, constraint modifier over and over and over and over. I will have a bunch of constraints down here. Why I do that? When you just can parent it to it, I just can parent it and just move it there. So that's the beauty. So now we see why it's beautiful to have it there. Because see, this is the thing I like. I could have multiple cameras on here. In different positions, like I got this camera right here, all pointing to the designer, but from different spots. I should have did that, but I don't do that. But you got the point of the beauty of having that one object follow the path, then you print your other objects to the object following the path. So I hope you got some insight into these people about the power of parenting to the object following the path. If you need a blender, you need, you need to any 3D application, but I'm assuming you need a blender if you listen to me, you use a blender. Don't stop, keep pushing forward. The more you push forward, the more your mind will accept this 3D software and open up to it like mine has been. The next time, Blender Family, 3D Family, peace.